Hey everybody, Jennifer Schaus here coming to you live today from Washington, D.C. And thanks for joining us in our webinar uh, Wednesday series. Today is actually Thursday, so we're running this one a day late. Thank you for your, uh, your patience uh, with our rescheduling. Uh, today we're going to cover Cadell Construction, but uh, a few notes before we dig into the data. Um, all of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. You can find our recordings on our YouTube channel. And all of the PowerPoints are over on slideshare.net. You can log in to slideshare.net with your LinkedIn credentials, and it won't cost you anything to obtain the PowerPoints. Uh, we've got over 600 plus webinars on the YouTube channel, and obviously the um, the mirror uh, of that is found on slideshare to grab the, uh, the PowerPoints. Just a little bit about us. We are based in downtown DC and work with established government contractors. Uh, primarily on GSA schedule support, other contract vehicles. Uh, we also will put together a market intelligence reports, so uh, more or less a report of business opportunities, uh, past performance, and kind of charting a path forward so you know uh, which departments and agencies are buying your product services or software uh, and where to go. Uh, some of the other services are listed on our website under the About Us section. Um, and throughout the year, we put on some events and conferences. Uh, in the event that you're selling to federal contractors, uh, our newsletter that goes out every Monday reaches over 26,000 um, subscribers, most of which are government contractors. You've got advertising options there. Uh, you can also advertise with us through LinkedIn and uh, become a sponsor in any of our webinars. You can also put on your own webinar with us as well. If you want information about that, just uh, shoot us an email to the hello at jennifershouse.com. Some uh, specialty webinars that are on the schedule uh, next month, October 19th, so less than a month away. Uh, we're working with our friends at GovSpend and FedMind to put together a GSA schedule webinar uh, later in the month on the 26th uh, with Visible Thread. These are both on our website under the event section. Uh, we've got a, um, a webinar on capitalizing on fiscal year 24 federal contracts. Uh, as we look into next year, 2024, which is um, Obviously, some time away, but it'll be here, I'm sure, before we know it, February 15th, with the PTAC, which is now an Apex Accelerator a marketing class. Uh, the GSA Oasis Plus uh, due date is now October 20th, uh, so there's still uh, some time to get your proposals together for that. Uh, if you need any, um, any review uh, services or assistance with actually getting onto that contract vehicle, again, send us an email to the hello at jennifershelves.com. Um, the event, the reason that our uh, webinars are all complimentary is thanks to the corporate sponsors that we've got. Um, so let's uh, take a look at those. Uh, and we'd like to thank our friends at Gov Events, so the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and our events on govevents.com, as well as our recordings from our past 600 plus webinars. We also want to thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They're the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small, women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and 8A firms. Visit setasidealert.com for more information. Uh, the Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars. We want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. The Virginia PTAC at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to established government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live trainings, and uh, other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. They do offer one-on-one um, -on -one counseling as well, and that's limited to eligible client companies. The Greater Ruston Chamber of Commerce has a monthly government contracting council meeting. Uh, it allows you to network with your peers, learn about upcoming events and opportunities, and help shape future programming. The meetings take place the fourth Tuesday of the month. So this month, it'll be Tuesday, October 24th from 8.30 to 9.30. It's a great event. If you're interested in attending, shoot Alicia Field, her email address is there at the bottom, uh, an email to get additional details. Uh, FBC, this is the Federal Business Council. Uh, events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring procurement and industry together, to bring government, I'm sorry, uh, industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. FBC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government 
achieve its goals. This includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and offsite meetings. FPC provides full life cycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FPC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fpcinc.com. Uh, Bitspeed. Bitspeed helps and you win. Uh, federal Find uh, opportunities from every federal, state, local, and public source in the U.S. Bitspeed can help you find teaming partners, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, and can also provide you with a compliance matrix and proposal templates. Bitspeed is an official partner of the U.S. SBA's 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at bitspeed.com. We've got a, an email and a phone number uh, also at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Gubspen and Fedmine. Again, they uh, Gubspen and Fedmine have powered the data for this series and all of the other uh, webinars that we've done in the past. Uh, I believe it's been two to three years. Um, so again, we want to thank them for providing the data. They're the go-to platform for uh, public sector intelligence. This includes federal, state, local, and education uh, institutions. Uh, they're the leading source of data analytics and insight for government contracts, and they integrate data from 18 federal data sources and sets and create a single platform that places the data points at your fingertips. Um, you can also search, uh, as I mentioned, state, local, and education organizations. Um, and again, we want to thank them for providing the data in the webinar series. Okay, uh, a little bit about the series and the schedule. Uh, again, everything's recorded. We've got 600 plus videos on the YouTube channel. Those are complimentary. You can find the accompanying uh, PowerPoint over on slideshare.net. Just log in there with your LinkedIn credentials. Everything in red we've covered is on our website under the uh, tab called Top 40. And you'll get links to all of those. And uh, here's where we are. So we're almost finished with the schedule as the uh, as the year has moved on. Today we're covering Cadell Construction. We'll wrap up on Wednesday, November 15th with Glaxo. All the webinars are um, Wednesday, 12 o'clock, unless otherwise noted. Uh, we're assuming that most companies are listening to these uh, webinars due to the fact that they potentially want to subcontract with these firms. So we just uh, thought to give you some information on some best practices on contracting. First and foremost, you need to be familiar with the FAR and the DFARS, the Federal Acquisition Regulations, and then the same thing for the defense uh, agency agencies uh, and departments that fall under there. So you've got FAR Part 44, which covers subcontracting policies and procedures and all the flow down clauses. Uh, same thing there for defense contracting. So both of those will take you to webinars that we've completed uh, on these topics. Other webinars that we've done with subcontracting, we kicked off this series in February with a uh, six-part webinar covering everything from market research through to compliance. Um, that link uh, that you see at the top will get you there. We've also done subcontracting within all 15 of the federal departments. Uh, and so we looked at the top 100 vendors and looked at opportunities within uh, the top vendors within each uh, department. Um, and then same thing there with the uh, the subcontracting. Over the years, we've covered 30 plus webinars on more of the tactical and strategic aspects of subcontracting. Okay, um, first and foremost, if you are subcontracting, uh, you need to know what it is you're bringing to the table and define what you do and do it well and do only that. Um, if you're trying to be everything to everybody, uh, you're going to have a confused message. Um, most companies are not uh, big enough to be doing uh, more than one thing uh, successfully and with uh, high quality standards. So again, be very fo laser focused on what you do and um, you'll be more successful that way. Uh, once you've got that defined, then you want to look for actual opportunities and you really want to be proactive and not reactive. So. Look for opportunities that are uh, two, three, even four years out uh, where your past performance, your relationships, or perhaps a lower price can be valuable to the prime contractor that you want to work with who's up for a recompete or you think might be a good fit for a solicitation that's down the road. Uh, you can look for those primes as well as the opportunities and research these companies and stay abreast of kind of where they are to, and get to know them um, in the uh, in the time that leads up to the opportunity being posted and use all of the databases that are out there. There's plenty of free ones, SAM, FPDS, USA Spending. Those are kind of just the top uh, three. There's 
plenty more. Uh, you can also work with any of the paid aggregators, some of which are our sponsors. Uh, and that's probably the most important part. The more time that you spend on the research and analysis, the uh, the more successful that you'll be. Um, and signing up for anything from Google Alerts for uh, news that would impact both the department and the agency that you're working with, um, or as well as the actual contractor, uh, can be very, very helpful. Was there a merger and acquisition? Was there any report of fraud in the business? Did they lose a contract for... Um, violating something in false claims or you know these sort of things there could also be a lot of positive information um, so keep abreast of uh, what's happening within the departments agencies and the companies that you want to work with uh, make sure that your capability statement is customized for the actual opportunity uh, if not you're just going to look like everybody else and uh, nothing will set you apart uh, once you have all of this information and you've identified a, uh, a specific opportunity, that's at the point when you should register on the vendor's website, uh, sign up for their newsletter, look at the events that they're attending, go to those same events, what associations are they members of, join those associations, get on the committees in, within the associations with them, look for their small business liaison officers on LinkedIn, look for their program managers, have a reason for uh, contacting them it should be a specific opportunity a specific solicitation number you should have a date you should have uh, some market intelligence to go with that okay so let's go ahead and dig into Cadell construction they are number 33 in our uh, top 40 so some basic information uh, a link to their website uh, their small business uh, registration on their website they've got uh, a link for trade partners and then um, their uh, small business form, their point of contact is uh, Cindy uh, Casaberry, perhaps is how you pronounce her last name. I'm not sure. Apologies if that's incorrect. Um, she's also on LinkedIn, uh, but there is her direct uh, email. The uh, UEI that we're looking at pulled from Sam is listed here. There's also a lot of joint ventures that Cadell has formed. Uh, joint ventures then create a new LLC, which creates a new tax ID. So uh, we're looking at the, uh, the comprehensive list here today of Cadell Construction. Uh, their LinkedIn um, page is here. They've got a little bit over a thousand employees. Uh, uh, about 800 plus are there on LinkedIn. Their CEO and chairman is uh, Eddie Stewart. You can read a little bit about his background here. Um, and as I mentioned, Cindy Casaberry, there is their SBLO uh, with her contact information. Uh, prime Contracts on the civilian side, and this is an um, interesting uh, company, and we'll, we'll talk about um, kind of some of the fluctuations that we're going to see in their numbers just based on the nature of the work that they do. Um, they do work with commercial companies, uh, but obviously uh, federal government as well. That's why they're showing up here in our top 40. Uh, but you can see if we go back to 2019, and the reason we do that again is because of COVID, uh, because some numbers may look, um, uh, have been affected, companies have been affected either positively or negatively by COVID. Um, so we want to kind of give a, uh, we want to give a, a clearer picture of where they, the companies were and, and where they're going. So uh, when we look at the civilian agencies, uh, if you just look at the totals, uh, so the sector totals, the gray bar there in the bottom, uh, from 2019 to 2020, there's growth, uh, and then a dip in 2021, and then a huge, uh, huge growth in 2022 uh, due to State Department. So State Department, the work that they do there is primarily with their uh, State Department's OBO office. Um, uh, it's their uh, business operations outside of the U.S., so their OCONUS um business operations unit. So building embassies, building annexes, consulate offices, uh, upgrading embassies, uh, these sort of things. So uh, embassies aren't being built, you know, once a month. Uh, there's a limited number of them. And, um, and so that is why we see some uh, fluctuation there in 2022. There were some contracts uh, uh, I think in 2022, they uh, received a contract Cadell, for an embassy in Brazil and then an upgrade, I believe, in Milan, uh, Italy, and, and some other work as well. So uh, that is why you, you see the fluctuation there, but I'm sure that they're winning some work uh, every year uh, related to that. 
uh, and that's really what caused the uh, the big spike there in 2022. Um, it would probably have been uh, a clearer picture if we went back even before 2019, um, and then 2023 um, still is not closed out. So, um, and any of these that are going to have uh, clearances associated with them are probably going to have delayed reporting. So the State Department work is probably uh, a little bit uh, delayed, as is what we see on the defense side. On the defense side, uh, again, if you look at the totals, there's fluctuation there as well. Um, so if we go back again to 2019, 206 million up to 314, then with a dip in 2021, um, still kind of falling behind in 2022 and 2023 is uh, at this point half of um, half of 2022 numbers. So a lot of what they're uh, building here are going to be military bases, installations, or perhaps upgrades to uh, existing ones. Uh, bulk of the work currently is with the Navy, followed by the Army. Uh, again, but fluctuations there as well. So um, as they say, the devil is in the details, and this is really just kind of giving you a high-level picture. The rest of the homework is uh, incumbent upon you to, to dig a little further to find out what they've done and, and, uh, and where they're going based on their past performance. So most of it, again, as I mentioned, is the commercial and um, building construction. Uh, a little bit shows up there, probably through their subcontractors on security services, meaning you know any sort of biometrics or anything that goes into these uh, embassies. Um, and then uh, a blip there on the radar for um, some uh, bridge construction. Okay, on the civilian side, um, these are the uh, subcontracting requirements stand for construction. Uh, the threshold is a million, where for uh, companies outside of uh, construction, the threshold for subcontracting is $750,000. So any contracts that are valued at a million or more on the construction side are going to require that subcontracting plan. So this is going to more or less mirror the, the slides that we saw earlier. Same thing here on the defense side with uh, Navy leading the charge and Army behind it. Um, and then some uh, some work back in 2019 uh, for about $2 million with DOD. Independent agencies, nothing really happening there. Um, it seems like they're focused on uh, DOD and um, primarily State Department with a little bit of DHS. Um, so Army and Navy, uh, you've got your numbers here, 51 actions, uh, roughly a total of $21.8 million. Um, and then uh, uh, some additional information there at the top of the screen, 35 sub-awardees and then two uh, prime awardees. And I believe that is part of the, uh, the joint venture. Um, so again, these guys have many uh, joint ventures uh, because I'm sure when the State Department or even the military is putting out solicitations, Cadell brings their piece of the, the puzzle uh, to the party. And then there are gonna be other companies that are gonna be uh, related to uh, to building these embassies and structures for Department of Defense that they cannot do at all. So that's why they um, typically will form a joint venture. They can also do it for strategic reasons to um, show up kind of as a, as a small business. Um, okay, uh, and then we've got um, just more of a breakdown here. And this uh, looks like this is, again, part of the, the joint venture. So the um, commercial uh, buildings, uh, multi-family housing, that's probably DOD, uh, military bases around the world. Uh, these guys do a lot of work internationally, uh, as I mentioned, with the OBO office from State Department and then uh, uh, building construction. Um, list here of some of the subcontractors uh, that they work with. Again, um, I'm sure there's plenty uh, that trickles down to subs under even under even these uh, companies. So I think it would be worth your while if you're in this sector to dig a little bit deeper on these companies. Uh, looks like Rocky Mountain and Cleveland Construction get the bulk of the work with um, a good deal of them being still spread out between the, um, the remaining eight companies there. And there's gonna be more than 10 subcontractors that they work with, uh, but these are just the top 10. Uh, the top five uh, reported uh, listed here. So uh, some of the same companies that we saw there on that last slide. Uh, again, I would uh, encourage you if you're in this sector and want to work with Cadell that you dig in a little bit deeper on these companies um, by looking at uh, the, con the associated contracts um, and looking at uh, even specifically at the NAICS code to make sure that is in sync with what it is that your company does. 
on the government, um, on the two max government wide acquisition contracts, uh, we've got some Matox and Max. Um, Max are the multiple board construction contracts that's got two C's in it, as, um, as opposed to um, uh, as opposed to I'm sorry, you've just the uh, the Max, and then you've got your uh, your Matox, which are going to be the task orders um, under those uh, contracts. So uh, you can see here again a lot of the uh, the JVs are are showing up as well. Um, and again, I would uh, I would encourage you to, to dig a little bit deeper under those um, just to get some information, even on the ones that show zero or a, a, a negative um, uh, accounting uh, insert there to find out you know what exactly happened uh, and and maybe look at some of the pricing if it's listed on these contract vehicles. Any of their expiring contracts? Uh, we've got quite a few showing up. Uh, again, I would encourage you to dig deeper into the contract number, just basically copy and paste that number into SAM.gov um, and look at the details, uh, which is where um, the real the real beef is going to show up. Um, these have very interesting number of transactions, which are not a lot. A lot of times when we go through these webinars, the number of transactions can be, you know, uh, it could be a multi-million dollar contract with 300 transactions, meaning that that was broken into uh, 300 plus uh, task orders. These are larger, uh, meaning the the number of transactions will be small, so the dollar value will be higher. Again, devil's in the details, so take those contract numbers, dig a little further. A lot of these, again, are joint ventures, and I would look at who the uh, who the companies are that they are um, that they have the joint ventures with, and that would um, just be a simple search on Sam.gov. Some conclusions a little bit about the company. They were founded in 1983, so uh, some time ago, uh, primarily focused on uh, the overseas business operations, diplomatic facilities, prisons. Um, they've got uh, almost 5,000 plus staff uh, over the, the globe. Um, and their founder passed away earlier this year. Uh, he was in his, I believe, 90s, so I believe that he was uh, not really involved in the business at this point in his life. Uh, but if you go to their website, you can get some more information about the embassy work that they do, the army, um, uh, hangars for uh, military, uh, as well as just commercial. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, and I think it's one of the next code shows uh, some of the technology work that they do, and that's going to be related to the biometrics. Those are going to be through subcontractors. Um, obviously, uh, embassies are going to be secure facilities that have technology built into them. So that would be a, an opportunity for subcontractors to work with Cadell. Uh, some other highlights here from their website, uh, the work they did in Kabul, uh, Third Army Headquarters, uh, Embassy in uh, Moscow, as well as Beijing. Uh, those obviously are going to be very, very secure, uh, just based on the location and what's happening in the world. Uh, so I think some uh, they've got some good opportunity there. It seems like they have a, a corner on the market. Um, and uh, you've got a point of contact there um, for the, uh, the small business liaison officer. I would not contact her and ask her to do your homework. Do all of your research first. Use the data that we've provided here today to dig a little bit deeper. It's probably going to take you a couple weeks if you're really thorough, which I would highly encourage you to do before you reach out to Cindy. Um, and then just stay abreast of news that uh, newsworthy items that are affecting the business. Know who's in charge. Um, you know, uh, take a lot of this information and dig into SAM deeper. These, again, are just very high level uh, presentations to get you started. Again, today's webinar uh, has been recorded, as have all of our webinars, uh, 600 plus of them on the YouTube channel. Please follow our YouTube channel, give us a like, leave a comment, um, grab the PowerPoints over on SlideShare. Here's the schedule, everything in red we've completed. You can get those uh, recordings on our website under the top 40 uh, section of the website. And next week, we're going to cover National Steel and Shipbuilding. We'll close out the uh, season on Wednesday, November 15th with GlaxoSmithKline. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.